So why is your call center failing? Is it a tech problem or is it a people problem? We're going to talk about this as well as jump into our meme of the week. And you don't want to miss our segment on what the AI is that. All this and more on this episode of Cloud Sherpa. All right, guys. So joining me today on Cloud Sherpa is my good buddy, Joey Muggs Perez, as many of you may know him on LinkedIn. Um, so Joey, we're going to be talking a little bit about call centers today. And cool. really, you know, we talk a lot about technology in the call center. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that we've been doing here at Vocal Point is we've started to get into recognizing that sometimes it's not a technology problem. Sometimes it can be a people problem. Yeah. Um, so I want to throw this to you because you've been in a call center environment before you've worked in a call center environment. Um, and you know, we're going to dig into that a little bit. And then I know you've got uh, a cool meme of the week that you want to share with us. And, um, and then we'll also jump into our, what the AI is that segment uh and i know you've got an ai tool that you want to talk about that your daughter's been playing around with so yeah yeah sure i'm so excited about that one let me tell you um nothing like technology moving faster than you can keep up with bro yeah so i'm grateful to jump into this discussion too man because i think it's definitely something that we um we know especially before all of the technological leaps we've taken uh in the call center world as far as what works what doesn't and why it's just overall sucking um to be quite blunt we know that um one thing i have experienced and i mean I have a little over a decade um in direct marketing and sales uh, most of that decade was done over the phones and the different lines of businesses so um what i recognize too is a lot of times there's a tech the technology component isn't maximized to its fullest degree and then the training segments will suffer greatly um, one thing that I know that is a major problem is not being honest about how both of them <laughs> play, play a part. Right. Uh, and so I'm like, right. man management takes a, it's either, or, and it's a pointing fingers, kind of like how a sales and marketing department will point fingers. No, dude, they just, they both need to do better at working together and then being honest about where those holes are so that we can do better at coaching. We can supplement the, maybe the lack of training or staff for help on the floor with technology that could really help the agent beat those bell curves when it comes to their first time on the phone or to a new industry. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And, and you know, I, I see these call centers that always want to track KPIs and, and try to stay ahead of the curve. Um, and, and they always talk about building like a culture within their call center. Um, but what I always, say to them is how can you focus on building a culture when you've got this revolving door of <laughs> agents coming and going you have no culture when your you know attrition rate is 70 percent that you're rehiring every year and going through this cycle yeah. so it would you say that's a good place to start is understanding what your attrition rate is before we can figure out if it's a technology problem or a people problem yeah i mean dude i think you're gonna be you're kind to even margin at 70 dude i'd say it's higher you know personally just from a personal experience but you know uh, yes i think being honest because if you look at even the word culture it's used in a lot of different settings but if you asked 100 people what culture meant even within your own organization i think they'd all have a slightly different variation of it and that has to deal with kind of like what we would say is like continuity in a movie right um, or just branding with the internal, with your internal employees. Do people really believe the mission and vision statement? And is that something that they herald? Or is that just something that they know out of compliance? You know what I'm saying? So is that something you heard a lot when you were in the call center? Um, did, were they always harping on, you know, uh, their particular vision or their mission? No, most cases not. Um, as a matter of fact, my favorite organizations that I worked for would have um, separate from sales meetings, we'd have like vision 
vision boarding, right? It's not that what they would call it, but that's what would happen is it would be a, a leveling of the playing field and let's get reminded as to why we're doing this. Right. Um, sometimes it was about really figuring out how this actually does serve the customer. So realizing that you're not selling something over the phone, you're really serving a family, right? So whether someone's selling a, a car or a vacation or a marketing package, who is that serving at the end? And how is that impacting that community? And by that impact of the community, how is it impacting, you know, and just kind of get back into the macro view. And that can yep. be very helpful for the individual agent who is, for lack of better words, working like a factory worker in an assembly line, doing these same sets of steps, depending on what part of the process you're plugging them into, including Q and A, um, cause those guys get left out a lot in, mm. in how they're, how do they impact the culture, you know? of the call center. So that's, that's definitely one thing. So yes, examine the culture Two, I would then also look at processes. Cause you mentioned, uh, I think upper management's or one of their favorite terms on KPIs. You ask just about any frontline worker, what a KPI is. And most of them don't know. So how could I measure up? Even if I understand that you are measuring the why behind the measurement and why is that maybe more important? than certain layers of my performance. So let me give you a quick example. And I'd like to get your kind of feedback on that. Mm. If it takes me longer to handle a call, but that becomes a one call resolution. And yet my pay grade is scaled based off of how many calls I can keep under a certain amount of time. Why isn't that something like a variable that's measured to the same degree of impact on my, for instance, commission? Right. You know, right. so it's interesting, man. Sometimes like we'll use, and I don't think it's always wrong to do this, by the way, it's to use a pay structure that's going to motivate the staff. But um, there's an actual great segment. Uh, I don't know. It's just coming to mind right now from Jocko Willink on extreme ownership in that book where he talks about how they had this really complex pay structure and upper management understood it clearly. And they understood why it should incentivize, but it only muddied the water for the sales force. So they didn't know how to act on it in a way that actually brought the productivity up that the commission structure mm -hmm. on paper should have. So, you know, dude, so, I, could, I could theorize all day about how to swing a bat, but dude, swing the bat and let's see how that works. So I get, you know, that you, you're saying swing the bat, right? Um, jump in, the water's fine. Uh, and, and that often is the case with a lot of agents is they got to get over that fear of just jumping in. Yeah, but sometimes it is a technology problem. Um, but then we also see that sometimes, it, you know, these organizations might have the right technology in place. They're just not utilizing it or there's just not a high enough adoption rate. Mm -hmm. Did you see that when you were working at some of these call centers where maybe you had all these great tools, but nobody even knew how to use them? Every single one. <laughs> there wasn't not one place. Now that I know what I know on this side of the desk, on the yeah. consulting side and understanding what questions to even ask as I follow back up with some of those places, both out of looking for prospective business and, hey man, did you know that this existed? And just having conversations with colleagues that I've maintained over the years, like my goodness, there's so much that's left on the table. It's, in, it's insane. So one example would be understanding how to actually leverage the call being trans, like transcribed. You know, okay. no one's going to read a, you know, 30 minute conversation when I have 10 agents or 15 agents on just a management level, let alone if I'm like the floor director, right. Of a, of a big call center, but man, AI could be leveraged against that transcription. Certainly we know about things like keywords, right. That are being said, Hey, don't say this and make sure you say that on the call uh, right. for a number of different reasons, but then using that like an AI tool to leverage the, the technology that you have in place so that I can make a better coaching call. Cause in most cases, and I say this knowing that there's a heart, a high desire from the guys we've spoken to just in my time mm -hmm. working with you here of people wanting to get to this point, but dude, most people are still waiting an excessive amount of time between a call happening and the follow up with the agent to train them on what happened on that call. So, so why like, do you think that is? What's what's the biggest driver in that? I mean, the revolving door and the lack of knowing how to leverage the technology. So we have, 
you know, a culture of, so to speak, old car dogs, people who are in the business, they're not going to move, right? If people stay, for instance, in call center worlds, I've noticed it just seems to be that you might stay in the same industry, even if you change call centers. So it's still a revolving door for the business. You're just not in a revolving door of the industry, right? It's just like, it's weird. But, and that's how people will end up staying, becoming seasoned is they'll, you know, so to speak, park hop, right? Into different places until eventually they get it. Uh, And so, but you think management doesn't have really the staff there that knows how to effectively, and then the workflows aren't in place to support them with the data that they already have. Right. So, so again, let me ask you this though, uh, just in the interest of time, do you think some of these things can be overcome by training, um, when it comes to, uh, tools maybe that they currently have versus, you know, scrapping stuff and, and trying to, you know, upgrade to a new platform that we think is going to be sexier. It's going to give us all the bells and whistles we want, and it's going to give us the AI tools we want. It might reduce you know, labor, but at the end of the day, is it really going to, uh, you know, be that a great of a tool if people don't use it? And can we get maybe further with just training the people correctly? Yeah, that's a great point. And I, I would say that that's the root of it. You know, if I had to pick one over the other, I would rather train people. And I say that because I think most companies default to this, even if whether they mean it or not is a different story, but yeah, that's another pot of coffee, man. But people are our biggest asset. So yeah, that's true. Then invest in the people. And sometimes that goes beyond what the companies are willing to invest in when it comes to training. So helping somebody become as an agent purpose driven lets the agent know that the company cares about the agent's best interests even if it's not always perfectly aligned with the company by me being a healthy individual having a mental health state that's Mm -hmm. they can be competent and serve a, a guest um the tools and training accessible to me so that i can be less dependent upon the company to be competent at my job those right. things empower me and if you can teach me how those skills translate into other parts of my life then then the company becomes invaluable to me it's no longer just a paycheck i'm purpose driven while i'm there so i think that's a big deal big time um, okay yeah well cool um so i i really appreciate you jumping into this um i know one of the things that you've been working on because this whole uh, call center world is kind of passionate to you um because of your background uh tell me a little bit about or or just you know touch on the tools that you you're putting together right now with the training um that you've been developing yeah dude i I've, I've been man blessed to recognize that it's not self and professional development isn't enough that's why I mean, it's becoming purpose driven behind that because that just become other tools. And to your point a moment ago, if you don't utilize what tools are available, it doesn't matter how fancy the tool is, right? Like mm-hmm. You need to know how to use it. So the training that I began making is very granular in trying to tap into why does somebody turn this from a being a sales job, for instance, to a profession? How do I become a professional on the phone? What does that what, mean? You mean people don't go into a uh, call center, just going, you know, man, I always wanted to be a call center agent. Yeah, brother. That's actually one of my favorite, <laughs> uh, when I've done in-house trainings for the call centers, uh, one of my favorite questions to bring up when I'm talking about skill sets, or if, especially if I'm dealing with a bunch of salty veterans that are wondering why they got to take time off the phone to talk to some joker about this is how many of y'all grew up wanting to be a call center agent? Like none of y'all, none of y'all. And yet there's, there's, you know, there's paper tags on a couple plates outside, right? On a couple vehicles out there. There's people who've been homeless, who've now moved out of that or have been able to impact other causes that they care about. So let's not pretend that there isn't good money here, but let's figure out why you're practicing on your, on the, the, the customer. Like that's the problem is in most cases you're waiting and using old techniques to practice on customers instead of acclimating and adapting to the way that people shop today. So, yep. you know, I think that's important to kind of tap into with this different style of training. Cool. 
Well, listen, I know we're running up on time here. So uh, I wanted to get in our meme of the week segment. So Joey, <laughs> show me what your meme of the week is. Yeah, check this out. <laughs> I am a god, you dull creature. And I will not be bullied by that. Puny god. Okay, so that was a funny one. Uh, so, Joey, I want to ask you, man, why did you pick that one today? Dude, because we as humans always want to break everything, man. So, as soon as we get access to something new, I don't care if it's a video game. There's like a whole segment of people who are hired to find out how to break it. <laughs> so, so it seems Or control fitting. it, right? Yeah, dude. Or, or new, find a new use for it, innovate it already. So, yeah, man, it's ridiculous. But, you know, kind of a funny funny marvel take on it <laughs> yeah i know i like that one that, that was a good one so um i guess the, the the next thing i wanted to jump into and and this is really where we're going to wrap this uh episode up is i wanted to talk about the the our what's the what the ai is that segment yeah because th this is really uh something that's kind of funny that we wanted to start doing because there's so many ai tools out there uh, and some of them are really funny. Some of them are really cool where you can create images or maybe they help you do tasks better. Um, but you've got one that your, your daughter's actually using, right? So I wanted you to talk about that one. Yeah, man, it's, uh, things are getting weird, man. They're getting weird. <laughs> so um, it's crazy. I seen, the, so the app specifically is called character.ai. Um, what it's allowed okay. is essentially someone to program a personality using something like chat GPT uh, into the system as a preset and then allow so, so, you. So how would you do that? Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, there's a number of ways I've seen. Um, I want to kind of backtrack for a moment where at some point in the last couple months, at least of the filming of this, um, after chat GPT released, people started figuring out how to break it, which is very close to kind of that meme um where they're putting in prompts that force the chat gpt to override the open ai parameters that were given to it so right right it, it, so that was like one of the things so i think they fixed that by now um but that's kind of the point is poking at these things and so as far as how someone enters it um i couldn't get too technical with you on it what i know is i've seen that there are creator profiles that i can make and then I'm sure if no kidding, if I use chat GPT mm. and said, Hey, here are the characteristics or scrub the internet, find the characteristics of this type of avatar. I'm going to use Mickey mouse, right? Cause that happens to be a, a, a pretty well-known one. The evil and empire. Then, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, because I want that implication to be made in the conversation you have with Mickey, instead of it being Mickey, I want it to be a 30 year old drunk Mickey, right. Mm. That you're talking to. So, now i can as a user in this platform select that preset i can okay i want to talk to mickey mouse that's going to give me a, a list of all the different profiles that people have made with mickey mouse with different variations of that personality and then i can click the drunk one and then i'm talking to talking to mickey through chat um but he's drunk so you'll, okay. hear, you'll see in the chat prompts he hiccups or maybe he's flirty maybe he's um, it may, it leaning toward a specific ideology. This is kind of where it gets strange, even stranger, right? Right, where you have to ask what the AI is that man? Like, what and, is and going so on is, here, dude? Is this a free tool? And and what's yeah. the name of it? Yeah. So the, the the tool specific I'm talking about is called Character AI, and very okay. much like a Chat GPT, you would sign in with like an email address, so nothing crazy. Um, so they have like a freemium version. Mm hmm you know and this is where I, I i had a i got to have a very insightful conversation about cybersecurity and about what what the the internet remembers about what you type with her so that was that was fun <laughs> that's always a good one to have with your kids right oh yeah love being a dad <laughs> <laughs> well we'll put a link to that particular tool down in the description for anybody who wants to check it out but man i'm really thankful that you were able to jump into this discussion um, yeah, especially since this pertains so much to the call center and you know what you're trying to specifically do around that um, and then the next time 
I hope to, you know, dig a little bit deeper into either some of the call center stuff, or maybe even we, we might jump into some of the cybersecurity stuff. We don't really know where that next episode is going to go quite yet. Yeah. But looking forward to it, man. This has been fun. Yeah, man, I agree. Me too. This is a this is a fun setup. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to get some feedback on what people want to hear as we get more technical into the, into different uh, layers of this, you know? Yeah, and that's true. So, I mean, if you guys have something that you want us to talk about, certainly uh, let us know in the uh, comments there. We're certainly happy to talk about a lot of different stuff with regard to technology, um, you know, or uh, technology procurement in general and and the whole world of it because there's uh so much to it and so many layers to it so we're going to get into a lot of that throughout this uh you know journey here at this podcast but man thanks for jumping in here joey and uh yeah that's a wrap i, I look forward to ch- jumping into the next you know podcast here yeah me too brother so thanks for joining cloud sherpa my name is derek roush with joey perez luke 923